with a little bit of luck involved. Oh, come on. Come on, keep it steady. Keep it steady. Great one versus one duel here. These aircraft are exceptionally well paired against each other. This can't be happening. Finally. So, welcome back to the channel. Today we are having another member of the Series 5, um, Series of Fighter Aircraft from Italy. And we are taking a look at the arguably most beautiful one, but also the one that is the least known of the bunch, the Rajani RE2005. Now, this is, as said, one of the most beautiful fighter aircraft of World War II. It's often stated to be the most beautiful Axis fighter, and I can certainly uh, see where... Um, this clan is coming from. This thing is looks incredibly balanced. Everything about this aircraft just screams styling. Whether it is the semi-elliptical wings, um, the very narrow rear fuselage with its large tail and control surfaces. This thing just looks uh, from every angle. This thing just just emits beauty, if you ask me. Now, in order to understand this aircraft, we need to look at um, the Italian Air Force in general, and also its predecessors in the circumstances that com contributed to designing this outstanding fighter aircraft. Now, first of all, um, Reggiani is an aircraft company that you don't really hear much about. In general, Johnny was much more well known for um, its work in railways, <clears throat> and only in the early 1930s did they start getting into the aircraft business, um, producing several other aircraft uh, in license. They were a subsidiary of the Caproni um, company. Another big Italian aviation uh, com uh, aviation industry. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, and they didn't start. Uh, Rajani in, in itself didn't start pre um, coming up with their own designs until the late 1930s. So they joined into the game rather late, shortly before World War Two. The other two main rival companies, Fiat and um, Maki, they both had previous experience with uh, combat aircraft, uh, and Rajani was um, pretty new. Now, in general, Rajani is a company that actually exists today as well. After the war, they um, weren't involved in uh, aviation industry anymore. Today, they are much, uh, more well known for their work in 
cranes and uh, civil construction equipment. So, which is uh, really an interesting development, if you ask me. From railways to planes to cranes. But well, they are still around. They're doing pretty well for themselves. Um, so good for them. Now back to the aircraft that we want to talk about. Um, or oh, the circumstances that led to it. Italy had in the 1930s a very capable air force. Um, they were pretty proud of their air force. They had some excellent designs for the 1930s. Their biplanes, in, in um, <clears throat> especially their biplanes, they were some of the best, if not the best, around with the uh, Fiat CR32 um, being used in the Spanish, Spanish Civil War, earning itself a legendary reputation in this conflict. And the following design, the CR42, despite coming rather late, was still one of the best biplane fighters, if not the best biplane fighter, to have ever been produced. They also had um, a decent bomber force. Um, the bom bomber that comes to mind, of course, the Savoia Machete SM-79. Um, and some other frontline fighters that were, at the time, pretty top-notch, like the Maki C-200 Zeta or the Fiat G-50. They also had um, uh, some serious development put into uh, seaplanes and floatplanes and the Italians still hold the record for the fastest uh, seaplane to have ever been built. I don't know the exact number right now but it's something like 750, I'm not quite sure but just, just it's definitely over 700 km power. Just think of a seaplane going that fast, it's absolutely insane. So the Italians certainly had uh, the credentials to design and put to service some amazing uh, aircraft. Now, throughout the early part of the war, the C-200 and the G-50 formed the bulk of the frontline fighters, with the CR-42 of course um, being omnipresent as well. And while especially the former two were certainly decent aircraft, um, and with the Finns, for example, using the G-50 to some ridiculous uh, success, they had their fair share of problems, mainly that the engines uh, would become more and more obsolete with newer inline engines like the DB-601 um, or some of the uh, larger radials that were slowly beginning to be put into service, completely outclassing the sub-1000 horsepower engines the Italians were putting on their aircraft. Um, this resulted that, uh, starting from 1940-41 onwards, the Italian aircraft became more and more, I wouldn't say obsolete, but certainly they, they were lagging behind the international competition whether it, it, it was being from their own German allies or, um, of course, their British uh, rivals. The next best aircraft they had available was the Maki C-202, which was an excellent fighter aircraft in its own right. Um, where is it? Here we, of course, have this machine in game as well. This was the development of the MC200 Zeta, being fitted with uh, a license-built Daimler-Benz DB601 engine, and for quite some time this remained the best fighter aircraft Italy had to offer, and it certainly was a great performer, however it had its fair share of problems, mainly um, some serious uh, reliability problems with the radio equipment, and most importantly, a lack of proper armament. This thing was armed with usually with 250 cals, with some machines getting two additional uh, 30 cals in the wings. However, in any case, this was certainly not enough. Uh, and while these planes performed admirably, um, Italy, the Italian designers, they knew that uh, something better was needed to counter not only the new um, newer versions of, for example, the Spitfire, P-47s, P-48s that were coming to service, but most importantly, enemy bombers. By the time these aircraft were designed, 
uh, Italy had had um, been in range for uh, like bombing strikes, and with the C two hundreds and C two twos abysmal armament, it was clear that the new series of fighters needed definitely uh, some better armament. Over Adrigiani, um, Roberto Longhi and Giuseppe Maraschini designed a new fighter aircraft. This fighter aircraft would become their entry for the Series 5. Now a little bit of information about the Series 5 is that um, all of these fighters were powered by the Daimler-Benz DB605 engine, a license-built version called the uh, RC10, no, the, oh my god, the 1050 RC58 Tifono, god what a name, I always get the numbers confused with this thing. This, uh, as we said, was a license built version of the Daniel Benz DB605A1 that also powered uh, such, air such aircraft as the famous Messerschmitt B409, uh, starting from, from its G variant, and also powered the Messerschmitt BF110. Now, for the other two fighters, we also took a, we already took a look at the G55. The other one was the famous C205, and this was the most straightforward of all the designs. This was, in all terms and purposes, a, a Folgore a C202, um, being re-engined with a Daimler Benz 605, which was pretty easy to do since the 605 was a direct development of the Daimler Benz 601, and therefore. Mounting a 605 onto a C202 was pretty easy. This went so far in that the um, the first prototype just was a, two, a C202 being fitted with a Daimler Benz 605 engine. But we will take a close look at this aircraft when we make a video about it, which will be pretty soon because I am planning to do the entire Series 5 in short order. Um, unlike this C205, which was um, basically, which was not a, a completely new development, both the G55 and, uh, and the 2005, they were basically complete redesigns of existing aircraft, with the G55 taking some um, design cues from the G50, which you can see in the wings and the tail and the RE 2005 being developed from the earlier 2000 series. These were the first aircraft Rijani designed and made and put into service, uh, which were solid performers in their own rights, especially the Rijani 2001 fitted with the Daniel Band 601. I think it was a 601. Um, they had a reputation for ruggedness, solid construction and exceptional maneuverability. The new Rajani 2005 was no different. Um, as you can see from its wing shape, let's take a quick look at the earlier aircraft. You can see where the wing shape is coming from. This was taken over from the earlier Rajani series of fighters. The aircraft was however bigger, the fuselage was lengthened, the basic shape of the wing was um, kept. However, the uh, cowling and parts of the fuselage and parts of the wing as well were completely redesigned. Wing area stayed around the same, 20.4 square meters. Mm, the aft fuselage was thinned. It was very thin and elegant looking with this very big tail surface. Mm. And uh, the aircraft now had a much more heavier armament than any of the previous iterations of the Rijani fighters, now sporting three 20mm cannons, two in the wings, one in the nose, and two 50 caliber Breda Safat machine guns. All of these uh, weapons were able to fire explosive uh, ammunition, which gave them great uh, hitting power. Um, the aircraft first took to the sky on the 9th of May 1942, so rather, so not actually too late. However, its introduction into service would not happen until uh, around one year later. As we stated, Rijani was a rather was rather new in the aircraft game, and um, they had they basically had a winner on their sides of this aircraft. However, this thing was incredibly expensive and complex to build. 
uh, this certainly was a quality piece of equipment um, which showed during testing uh, I think during one test this thing they, 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 they dove this thing to over 900 kilometers per hour uh, I, I, I can't remember the source but I am very sure I read that somewhere uh, on, on several sources actually um, and in general this was a very structurally sound aircraft now this compared with the high quality components made it exceptionally uh, exceptionally expensive it was even more expensive than the G55 which if you remember took three times as long to produce as the 109 um, and this thing was even more so um, during comparison with the G55 and the two C205 the uh, the Rajani fighter proved itself to be the best dogfighter of the bunch. The G55 was the best at high altitude, if I remember correctly. In general, the G55 and the RE2005 were pretty similar overall. The Rajani fighter, with its 3.6 tons of weight fully loaded of and its small dimensions, of course, being a little bit nimbler and lighter, which made it the superior dogfighter. Um, but the G55 wasn't really lagging much behind and it was better at high altitude, thanks to probably the uh, bigger wing. Um, all of the Series 5 carried heavy armament, but the C205, the Veltro, it was quickly thought that this was not... Uh, could not compete with the other two, which was also the... Uh, there was a German commission sent to Italy to review these three new fighters and they gave the RE2005 and the G55 excellent marks, while the C202, uh, C205 only gained an average um, from the Germans. As we stated, this thing came into service in 1943, um, and it quickly proved itself a very, very uh, deadly adversary, not only for enemy fighters, but also for enemy bombers. However, uh, as this thing was so complex and difficult to build, only 48 machines were ever produced. In general, the Series 5 came at a point in which uh, where Italy... <sighs> how, how do we state this? Italy was not really in the shape to produce this, these fighters en masse, not only were they under constant bombing uh, attacks by the Allies, but in 1943 they signed the armistice, which meant that um, aircraft production was tremendously uh, affected. The Italian co belligerent force that remained um, loyal to uh, their Nazi allies continued to build some of the aircraft and they were the ones that mostly flew the uh, Rajani 2005. The uh, Luftwaffe operated I think 12? 11? Uh, around a dozen of these machines mm, and they gave the machine excellent marks as well. Um, the most famous unit to have flown this thing was the 362nd Squadriglia. Um, I think only three squadrons operated the type under the Italian flag. And of course, the Luftwaffe operated a small bunch of them. Uh, the reports uh, where they operated very there are reports of them being used uh, over uh, Romania, over the place, the uh, oil fields, under German control. They certainly flew over Italy. That's uh, for sure. They were used in the defense of Naples, Rome, and uh, Sicily. Uh, and there are also reports of this machine being used over Berlin in the final days of the war. However, such claims, of course, need to be taken with a little bit of grain of salt. Um, the machine was not only present, again, only 48 were produced. Um, it is unlikely they saw much service uh, seeing just how how few of them were available well in the reports uh, by, by the pilots that flew them when they were used they proved themselves extremely deadly opponents the aircraft had a wing loading fully loaded of 177 kilograms this was 
actually this is pretty low this is comparable to a p51 however it has also a very large ring, wing area the semi-elliptical wing is reminiscent of the spitfire's wing and this together with the nimbleness and the light airframe remember only 3.6 turns fully loaded um, this thing was just an incredible dogfighter it could turn on a dime um, it could be uh, extended with the use of its combat flaps and the powerful engine of course did uh, its thing as well uh, one thing to note is that the uh, Italian uh, RE 2005s. Oh, by the way, we should uh, call this thing by its proper name. It, uh, by its nickname, Sagittarius. Saying RG 2005 all the time is pretty uh, strange. Yeah, Sag 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 <laughs> Sagittario or Archer is the name given to this thing. Um, all of the Series 5 had nicknames, the G55 being the Gentauro, this one the Sagittario, and the C205 the Veltro. Um, the Sagittario's engine, the Typhoon engine, it was at one point downrated f uh, in rounds per minute, I think from 2800 to 2650, some, somewhere around that, and this resulted in the aircraft. Um, having a little bit less horsepower than the original German engine. There were Rajani fighters, um, the ones flown by the Luftwaffe, which were given uh, proper DB6-05s, um, and these were slightly faster than the ones uh, with the uh, Tifone engine. The Tifone Rajanis were around 630 kilometers, and these there is one report stating that this thing could achieve 670, 671, I think, um, kilometers per hour at, what was it, 7,000 meters, I guess, so something around there. Uh, please don't quote me on that. I mean, the, the, the information for this aircraft is so scarce. This I, I remember reading it somewhere, definitely. Um, but... I am certainly no expert. Please don't quote my videos in uh, historical discussions or something like that. I'm just gave, giving you a basic overview of the aircraft. Um, but yeah, the Typhoon engines were downrated rounds per minute at some point. Uh, I don't even know why this happened. Probably because of reliability issues. Uh, in general, the Italian engines, many of them had reliability issues. And even though this was license built, it is likely that under the um, pressure the Italian air for uh, air industry was, thanks to the Allied bombing campaign, um, that certain issues were around at the time. Now, not only was the Rajani fighter um, used by the Germans, Sweden also showed a lot of interest in this type. Um, but an order for several of these machines, I think it was 50, um, was never fulfilled because of the war situation and it would remain that only 48 of these absolutely beautiful machines were produced and none of them survived to this day only one uh, rear section survives that's all that's left of this um, absolute gem So far for the Rajani R2, oh yeah, we should talk about variants, because there are variants of these things. Um, there was an RE2004, which was powered by Isotta Freshny Zeta engine. This was developed in case the DB605 was not available in larger numbers, or the engine was uh, insufficient. Um, the Isotta Freshny Zeta however, experienced numerous problems, and as the TB605 was all in all a very reliable engine. The project was soon dropped with only one prototype being begun. I don't think it was even finished. Um, yeah. The most interesting development was the Rajani RE2006. Like the G56 that we have in game, this was powered by the same engine with the G56 being powered by Dynaband 603. This was Germany's largest uh, in displacement, the largest 
V12, um, which producing some 750 horsepower, which will have given which was a tremendous boost from the 1475 of the um, standard DB605. These would become the Series 6 fighters. There was also a, a Veltr, um, a Maki design, I think it was the MC207, which only was available in paper form. I don't think the prototype was ever finished. One prototype of the Rear Johnny 2006 was finished, although it never took to the air. This thing would have been an absolute monster, and I hope we will get it in the game someday. Even if it's a premium, I, I'm gonna buy it the first uh, the first day this thing gets introduced into the game. It was an RE2005 powered by the DV603 engine, which would give this thing even more horsepower and make it even more of a performer in the game. Uh, the armament state, I as far as I know, the same. And uh, yeah, sadly, only one was built, and that one machine was very, very sadly never flown. There was also a twin boom variant, the Bifusiolero or something it's called. Uh, I'm not fluid in Italian. Um, this was basically uh, two Sagittarius um, fitted together. Um, similar, I think, to the SM92. Uh, there was also an RE2007, which was jet powered. Although the expected performance was, and the uh, accompanying large fuel consumption was so ho was so high, and the performance gained was so low compared to the expected performance from the Rajani 2006, that that project was quickly dropped. So far for the fighter uh, for the history of this fighter aircraft, um, let's take a look at this aircraft in game. The Rajani 2005 sits at a battle rating of 5.7, which sadly is not very good PR because uh, you're facing cancer constantly, either in the form of the Ju-288 or the F2Gs. This thing is able to deal with the F2Gs um, on equal terms, which is saying if you are at the same height, uh, one versus one, this thing is easily able to deal with them. Um, you mostly end up on the teams with the Ju-288, so yeah, you're facing most uh, many uh, enemy fighters. This thing is also, however, also able to take down enemy bombers with its uh, very heavy armament of 320s and 250 cals. The wing-mounted um, cannons have more armament than the uh, one in the nose, um, or at least they should, they should have. We now take a look at the aircraft in the game. As you can see, this thing is pretty small compared this to the C uh, for to the G fifty five. Or the C205, although the C205 isn't really that much uh, bigger. But yeah, this is a rather small aircraft. So you can see all the fuels carried in the wings, none in the fuselage because this is where, in this tiny uh, narrow section where the uh, radio and oxygen equipment is housed, leaving no room for fuel. In general, this thing had a rather um, low range. 320s, two in the wings, one in the nose, with an ahistorical amount of ammunition. I think it was lower than that. Uh, 170, I think. And the nose cannon carried less than the wing cannons, if I remember correctly. Don't know if there are some other sources for that, but I have 200. Well, the source I have read. Uh, said that this uh, that it carried less ammunition than the G55 however um whatever the case uh even if it was be only 170 rounds it would still be enough for this thing at the moment we have 200 so yeah we are taking that 
Mm, engine, of course, in the front. Yeah, all that good stuff. Um, protection is pretty limited. Eight millimeters on the seat. This was uh, face hardened. Or oh, certainly hardened steel, so um, it gave to, to improve the protection, but 8mm, yeah, it's not that much. And then also 50mm of bullet bulletproof glass. Limiting the amount of armor on this thing, but this of course helps it during dogfights, reducing um, the overall weight of the aircraft, making it lighter, therefore making it more nimble. Mm. Let's look at the modifications. What are the most important stuff? Of course the performance mods and the armament mods. I suggest going from here to there, tier for tier. The 20mm offensive rounds are very important because only they include the uh, air target belts for the Minengeschoss. A Minengeschoss, we talked about it earlier, being a thin down, uh, a 20mm round with a thinner wall. Um, it also lacks any uh, tracer. All of that space uh, is taken up by more explosive mass, giving these rounds some some absolutely absurd damage output. The 12.7 mm, 12.7 mm Breda rounds are also pretty powerful. If you take the air target belt they will get the job done in no time, and we have a lot of ammunition for these. Um, performance mode, of course, also being very important. New engine, new wings, all this good stuff is um, you need it, especially at the tier you are. Uh, you are at the tier you are playing. Um, I suggest going from here to there. The stuff, the bombs, you can disregard it unless you want to use it in uh, Crown RB, but I'm an Air RB main, so I never, I very rare, I think I took the bombs out only once, and that only because I needed some ground targets to get the uh, ticket count a little bit down. But you can disregard these ones. For completion sex, it can carry a 500 kg bomb and uh, two 100s max. But yeah. Battle rating wise, it sits at 5.7, which is not the best BR because you're gonna face cancer a lot of time in the form of the F2G and the JU288s. Uh, yeah. But this thing can get the job done. It's very maneuverable, it um, is very good in the dive, um, and carries some fantastic armament. Now, one thing to note is that this thing has an incredibly high repair cost of 12,220, so be careful. Uh, if you don't have a lot of money like I have, you'll lift my almost 30 million credits. Um, yeah, but it's certainly deserving of, it, of that high repair cost because this is an ex exceptionally good fighter. Uh, I think I maintain a good KD with this thing as well. Yeah, oh, it's, it's the talent crack of, with, with which I have the most kills. Uh, I maintain a KD of almost 3 to 1 with it, so certainly not bad. Mm. Oh, didn't realize my KD is over 3 to 1 slightly with the uh, G56, interesting. Huh. Where's the C205? Uh, if the C205 is only 2 to 1, I, I'm not doing too well with that one. <laughs> well, anyways, back to this uh, Rajani fighter. So much for the uh, modifications and um, all that stuff. I think we now can take this thing out uh, in a test flight to show you what this thing is able to do. Now, this thing operates best at a uh, higher altitude, but usually you don't have such altitudes here in War Thunder. Still, this thing uh, is very good at uh, low to medium altitudes. As I said, it's, it's similar in playstyle to the G55 or 109, 
However, it places more emphasis on maneuverability rather than speed. In my opinion, this makes it the best performer out of the Series 5. Historically, it's also the best performer. Um, it was the best dogfighter of the bunch. So, yeah. Its acceleration is decent. However, at 5.7, there are things that can surely outspeed this thing. It is not the fastest aircraft in the air. Corsairs, um, there are P-47Ms, all that stuff there. This thing is on one of the slower aircraft of this BR. Um, at least in level flight. The roll rate is very good. Maybe not 190, level, 190 levels of good, but certainly above average. And this gives this thing great flexibility in a dogfight. Turn rate, as you can see, even without flaps is very good. And with flaps it becomes even better. The thing is able to execute um, turns and maneuvers even at low speed. It's very stable, um, very agile. It responds to in input uh, beautifully. You have a very large rudder, a very large tail fin, giving you great stability. And you have a very responsive rudder as well. The thing tends to lock up at very high speeds, but it's not that, it's, that it is uh, completely uncontrollable. Unlike some uh, other aircraft, for example the Key 61 which just does not want to pull up above uh, some certain speeds. With the Rajani 2005, it's certainly is controllable. Climb rate is decent. Let's uh, climb a little bit up and show you how this thing behaves in the dive. It attains very high dive speeds. This was, a structurally speaking, very sound aircraft. Um, and therefore this thing can able is able to dive to very high speeds. 800 km per hour uh, is not a problem for this thing. Going into a dive. It also has, thanks to the um, low wing loading and large wing area, um, very docile landing characteristics historically. We have a landing speed of around 150 155 km per hour. And it's basically the same here in War Thunder. Uh, so it's around the same as an early 109. Let's see if this should be enough to demonstrate its dive performance. As you can see, the acceleration in dive is okay. Certainly not the best, but yeah. Acceptable. Yeah, so you can see, even at 700 km per hour, this thing is very easily uh, able to be ready to pull out of a dive. It does not hold the speed and pull out very well. Um, so, be, be beware of that. This thing is less of an energy fighter than a true dog fighter. Uh, but again, all speeds, this thing turns beautifully. Both in the vertical and the horizontal. It doesn't really matter where do you want to, fl uh, in which playing field you uh, want to fly your maneuvers, both the horizontal and the vertical are perfectly fine for the Rajani. I think, yes, uh, let's, let's put this thing down, let's uh, demonstrate a landing, there's the airfield, I'm going to sh quickly show how easy this thing is to land. It has a very wide track. It's pretty stable. The flaps are um, very strong. I mean they are very... Um, what's the term? Ah. These are the boost your maneuverability uh, quite a lot and the flaps are around as strong as in the 109F4 I think. So, over 400 km per hour, no problem. Unlike some other machines. Now, flaps extended. As you can see, I still have authority even at 150 km per hour. 
now yes taking a quick look at the cockpit somewhat small not a lot of bad that's new one online though um yeah look to the rear and you can see that that uh the view to the rear is not the best when the cockpit is uh, closed because of the uh, spine, but uh, there are worse examples. Looking, looking at UF six F Hellcat. Again, oh god, I, the looks of this thing can't get enough of this. Three twenty mils. 50 cals. These can make quick work of anything you encounter. Boom. Yeah. As you can see, yeah. View to the rear is somewhat obstructed by the cockpit frame and the spine. Well, that's it for the aircraft in the game. For maneuvers. Um, combat maneuvers. This thing is great in both horizontal and vertical uh, rolling scissors. Because of, of or general scissors, scissors in general. Because this thing has very good roll rate and great uh, maneuverability. If you control your throttle and make careful use of flaps, even Spitfires are no problem for the Rajani. And we will demonstrate this in uh, some of the gameplay. Speaking of which, I think we have covered any everything for this aircraft. That's important. Um, so let's head into our first battle. So. Once again taking out uh, the Sagittario. Finally we are not on the side of the team where the cancer bombers are. And only one F2G. Goodness gracious. Surprising low amount of cancer in the sky today. Well at least for this match anyways. Yak9 and an I-225, okay. Uh, and now the LA9 joins. Okay, yeah, Spitfire support. Uh, come on, dude. Thought we'd, we'd attack together. One goes left, one goes right would be the ideal plan. Okay, now we're going in. This guy's performing some crazy maneuvers. Got him. Oh, bye. Got him. Some quick bursts are all that is needed. Try to conserve my ammo. Try a new style of this thing. Usually I just do like some long bursts with this aircraft. Trying to hit my target, but maybe some shorter bursts. It just, um, yeah. Short burst at a time might do the trick better with this thing. There's something big coming. Uh, that's, that's a 288, right? Or a 264. Is he heading towards me or, or away from me? Oh no, wait. There's a 288. Uh, okay, a Spitfire I can handle with a little bit of luck. 
with a little bit of luck involved. Oh, come on. Come on, keep it steady. Keep it steady. Great one versus one duel here. These aircraft are exceptionally well paired against each other. Almost. Ah, oh, this can't be happening. Finally. That was a pretty good dogfight. I know I almost yeeted my fucking uh, what's it called remote because this damn screen just shuts down every fifteen minutes and it tells me oh three seconds to shut down. You fuck you. You ain't gonna shut down. You just had, just had a big square in the middle of the screen, couldn't see anything. <laughs> just had to to uh, guess where I aim. Seriously. Screw TVs that do that. I mean, there's probably a way to turn that off, but uh, still. <laughs> just in the middle of a dogfight, just this big square plopping up in the middle, telling you, oh, screen will shut down in 300 seconds, <laughs> and you're in the dogfight of your life. We have three kills. Enough I mean, to get one more. Wait, there is one aircraft. Oh, is there? Uh, no. I'm the only one going after this 190, so. Alright, now he's coming down to play again, I think. Going after the F2G. Okay, then let's head back into the fight and get our fourth kill. Maybe. Oh yeah, this guy is in all sorts of trouble against the 190 and the Tempest and the F2G is there. Oh, the F2G, yeah. The F2G is dead as shit. And no. How about no? Not going head on with a 190. Ah, okay, so the Tempest critted him. Alright. So, only bombers left, it seems. Well, one is a 288, I'm pretty sure of it. The other one, there was one big aircraft in the sky, maybe a 264. G8N1, <laughs> with two kills, so Death Star living up to its name. And then let's head back to base, rearm.
So, and we have rearmed. There is a speck in the distance. Looks like a big aircraft. What it is, no clue. I mean, it has to be one of the bombers, but which one? I'm guessing the 288. I do have a J7W, so uh, yeah. How many kills is he on? Two. Hmm. So that thing is actually a pretty good bomber killer. Uh huh. There is a two six four. Unlikely that we will get him. He is whoa. He's moving pretty fast. Probably came out of a dive just for returning to his base. Um. Yeah. He's this guy. Okay. There's another one with three point four. Man. 3.45 tons, that's... Is that 288 on its third run? How many can these fuckers drop? <clears throat> Anyways, uh, let's hope he doesn't just J out. I mean, they could, could understand when, if he does, but... I kinda wanna have that fourth kill. I mean, that epic spit, uh, dog fruit to Spitfire certainly was uh, something, but three kills, uh, it's good, but uh, I, I kind of want four. <laughs> ah, and he crashed. Oh, wait! The G8... Oh, that, that, that's fucking hilarious. The G8N1 is on, a, on his third kill. Holy hell. Question is, is that 264 able to repair or not? And where is the 288? Probably up to sp up in space or somewhere. Although, if it, no, if it's the guy from earlier with the uh, oh. there he is. What on earth is he doing? Ah, alright. Oh. Well, then most likely Spitfire is gonna get it on the N1K. Spitfire's... Uh, they should not be attacking bombers though. Spitfires are... Quite vulnerable. Come on, I hope the Spitfire doesn't get the kill I wanted. Or maybe the J... I mean, G8N1 is coming in. There's a good chance that he is. Oh yeah, and he is. He's going to intercept. He's in entering gunship mode. Uh. uh okay. Good. Well, that's three kills. Not bad at all. Certainly one of the more hilarious matches uh, I had. <laughs> I mean, that G8N1. What a rock star. <laughs> three, three air-to-air -air kills. Yeah, this thing, it didn't get the nickname Death Star from nothing. Ah, decent result. Not bad. Second in the team, I mean, obviously after this guy, I mean, although, no, actually barely, barely. We got one assist, so yeah. So, 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 so. This is looking fine right now. We do have cancer in the term of ju 288s but we do have quite some fighter planes as well, including another RE 2005. And there are a lot of enemy fighters. Ah, 
a sea fire. That's a uh, that could be a great dog fight. Sea fire versus an uh, uh, Rajani. Ooh, this is a, it's certainly a battle where pilot skill decides the battle. If you ask me. You know, those late war sea fires, they are rather. They're not unmaneuverable, but um, not as maneuverable as their land based versions. And the Rajani certainly can turn with them. Or at least maneuver with them. Yeah. Like that. Flaps deployed. This is what I'm talking about. Come on, come on. Almost. That's Mark 14. Oh, godlike. <laughs> God, I love this machine. Yeah, as said, this thing can certainly turn off Spitfires. There's another one coming in. And there's something else. Oh. I would love to have my altitude to fly some evasive maneuvers, so let's lure him back to base, maybe to the Tau 152. Engage him in a 2 versus 1. Although I think we might not be able to do that. that. I should not be afraid of a Spitfire. Uh, not of an FR. Yeah, buddy. Spinning won't do you any good. Took me more ammunition than I wanted to use, but nah, still. So, only the back had left. I could make this an ace, but do you know what? I could. We do have enough ammunition, we have a lot of 50 cal ammunition left. But this guy will most likely die before I I'm able to do anything. Is that 152H? Yes. The pens. I mean if the bear cat is able to reverse the turn. We got him. Great. So, that's four kills for me. Some pretty epic dogfights, I'd say. Let's see the results. Oh, 
Ah. Okay. Could be better, but still. We've got four kills on top of the leaderboard. I certainly won't complain. So, we are taking out the Rejani 2005. Here, of course, against the ever-present cancerous F2Gs. Now we have the even more cancerous and completely useless ju 288s So at least this is, is uh, a challenge. Yep, and we got one. Nice deflection shot against the Spitfire. And there are some more waiting for waiting to die at the hands of this Italian beauty. Well, let's see what the J7W is doing. Maybe he can make that Spitfire turn. Because then we have him. Or oh, he just kills it. Yeah. Let's not hit it too fast. Yep, got him as well. Keep the energy up. Not that is not that this thing really is a very good energy fighter. Oh, yeah, that LA9 is, is, is toast. No way, uh, he's gonna outturn a J2M. Well, you never know. Maybe... That's an expert line 9 pilot doing some crazy stuff with it to... Uh, I doubt it. Well, no, he is hanging in pretty good. Yeah, now, now, now he's, he's stalling out. Will we be able to get the kill? Most likely not, but... Yep, we got him. <laughs> I have to say, it took a little bit of a risk there shooting at long range. I almost hit the J2M. But I know what I'm doing. There's an I-225 as well, okay. Okay, we are... It's looking pretty good for us. Wait, am I recording? Oh, God. For a second and thought I hadn't, uh... Yeah. I hadn't pressed the record button. <laughs> you you wouldn't believe how often this has, this has happened to me. Okay, so I-225. There are several other guys left, including two bombers. Or attackers. We have enough ammunition to get one or two more kills. That guy needs to die. Okay, J2M, J2M is with me. 288s over there. Don't know what they are doing. Where is the enemy airfield? Let's see if some of these guys might have returned to their airbase. And we can catch them during uh, when they are still low and slow. Oh, doesn't seem to be anything there. Can't make up anything there as well. Where are these guys?
Hmm. Oh, there's an airfield there as well. Oh, is that even an airfield? Is this? I don't know. Let's be careful not to get ambushed by anyone. <sighs> this is slowly getting boring, I have to say. Oh, finally. There's an LA-9. Hey buddy, come on. Get your ass over here. Let's fight. Come on, comrade. Comrade Q Desnick 1. Uh, of course, now they turn... Uh, Great, and flag has already hit me. God, I seriously hate this. Yo, how far, how long is this flag ranged? Come on. Oh, seriously? Well then, I don't know how this happened, but it happened. Well, we are definitely stuffed now. This flag is pissing me royally off. Oh! <laughs> well, and that's a maneuvering kill right there. Oh, fucking yes. How far is up? Oh, this is not looking all too good. Let's engage full power. Doesn't matter if we gun the engine now. 14 kilometers to go. Come on. Fuel state is good enough. Just need to get back. You can do it, Rajani. As long as the oil and the water is not empty, we're good. <sighs> Wrong button, damn it. Trying to get a little bit of altitude going while still maintaining speed. Um, should our engine quit, we still have a little bit uh, um, of uh, distance we can glide. Okay, so at least the fuel leak has gone. Thank God for self sealing fuel tanks. But our water, but our radiator has properly been hit. I mean, yeah. Now, yeah, I think I know. We, I think I, we, we are safe now. I have four kills. Top of. Wait, four? Um, where did the fourth came from? I thought I had only three. Don't tell me the the, 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 the the kill on the A225 actually counted. I got two Spitfires. The LA-9. 
Ah, okay, I got the other LA9 as well, yeah. Yeah, and now our engine starts failing, but no worries, we are over the airfield. Let's bring her in for a soft landing. Tending. Let's maintain a little bit of power. 30% should be enough. We are damaged, so we are having less airflow over the wings, which means we need a little bit higher landing speed. But we managed to safely bring her down. Perfect. Oh, we took some serious damage from that flak. And all, all, all this shit is only flak damage. I think. I think none of the uh, aircraft, other aircraft have been able to hit me. Phew. As you can see, my repair crew is not maxed out on this. Um, yeah, I haven't flown the. I think, I think I'm not. Don't even have a rank six with the Italians, so yeah. Oh, but I'm, I mean, I mainly fly the uh, propeller planes of the uh, Italian Air Force because they are absolutely fantastic. The entire mid-tier um, tech tree of the of the Italian tree is just oh so good. They are great all-rounders with maybe an emphasis on dogfighting capabilities, but they are still fast enough to do the trick. I just love these. The Series 5. God. Gorgeous. Also the MC-202. Another very underrated aircraft. As well as many of the low-tier stuff. I mean the, the um, MC-200, the G-50, the CR-42. Those, these are all exceptionally good aircraft that should get more recognition in the game. But yeah, they are low-tier, so... Nobody cares about them, except I. Nine minutes left. We have three enemy aircraft up. One of them is a B-17, I think. Then there's the Tu-2, and what's the other? I don't know. Maybe another B-17? Let's find out. I doubt we'll get uh, one another kill. I mean, that Tu-2 is off to the heavens. And someone is already engaging him. Ah, oh, J2M. Oh, is that, is that the J2M from earlier? Yeah, it is. Oh boy. There's something. Or is that one of our 288s who has gone down? I don't know. Okay. The TU-2 is down. Which means only two aircraft to go. Maybe now it's time for... Oh wait, is... No, so... Huh? God damn it, what's going on? Oh wait, is this on? There. Uh, why is he so damn high? There must be another B-17. There was one earlier. I saw him. 
Uh, let's stay way clear of that of those guys. I mean, at this point, they're just buying time. I mean, it's not even do them any good. I mean, we are we are so far ahead in tickets. <sighs> There's one. Where's the other B17? It has to be another B17, right? I saw one earlier, and, that, and this guy. This can't be him. No way he's gonna. Go, he's he's uh, climbed up that high that quickly. Never ever. Well, we won this match, so, anyways. Yeah, this is without a premium account. Not bad, if I say so. Not <coughs> too bad. And here, starting the match in the beautiful Rajani Re 2005. I just noticed that I just mixed up German and English. Fuck. Alright, um, yeah. Dory Johnny. God, I do love this aircraft. Such a beauty. Just look at it. Oh, gorgeous. Drop that gorgeous. And an incredible fighter here in Warfighter as well. Well, let's start climbing. Oh god, this is an up tier, quite a hefty one. We have 262s in here. This means we gotta face Super Corsairs, F2Gs, P51Hs, probably. Maybe even some early jets. Oh uh, well. Oh well. At least we don't have that many JU-288s, because they are fucking cancer. Three cancer bombers. Four! Four! God damn it. Let me tell you, playing 5.7, 5.3 .5 5 to 5.5. Uh, 5 ah, god damn it. 5.0 to 6.0 is not funny at the moment. Because the German teams are full of 288s that are completely useless. And the enemy teams they have their own cancel plane, the F2G. But that thing is actually pretty much very OP. It should, in my opinion, not sit at 6.0s. At least 6.3, if not 6.7. And I have absolutely no clue why they buffed the uh, RE 2005 to 5.7 recently. It was perfect at 5.3. Um, I, can't, I can't imagine the stats being all too great for this aircraft. Because it just gets slaughtered by the abundance of enemy fighters, while uh, your own team mostly comprises JU 288s. One on one, this aircraft is able to beat any Allied fighter. But you, usually, uh, at this BR bracket, the battles aren't um, one versus one. You have a whole bunch of fighters gang raping your ass. But at least this time we seem to have uh, gotten a match with quite a bit of fighters on our own. And we do have some quite impressive ones. There's a J6K, a plane I don't have, because when it came out I had no computer. So, yeah. Pretty jealous. I really want that aircraft. But I just don't want to buy it from the market. I want to earn it. Well, 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 let's see, let's see. Spitfires and F8Fs, both uh, aircraft, this, uh, this machine is able to handle rather easily. Spitfires can be a good of, quite a bit of a handful. Uh, 
And yeah, we already arrived so late that, well, there isn't really much to do. Can we get a Spitfire? Uh, probably not. J6K? Yeah, I got him. You can already see that this aircraft, compared to the G55 we reviewed uh, weeks earlier, um, is more maneuverable. It rolls much better. And I think it also I think it turns better. Even though it has a higher wing loading. But I think but probably the center of gravity is better if it's aircraft or something. I don't know why. Um, I'm not that... Oh god. What the hell is he doing? Okay. Crit at him. Oof. Yeah, this guy has no chance. Got him. Hey, once an RE2005 is on your six, you can kiss your ass goodbye. Spitfire behind us. And unlike the G55, which I'd say is uh, a little bit more at home in the vertical, this thing um, can do both. It's just as good in the horizontal and the vertical. Okay. Nope, let's evade that. Deploy our flaps. Is he really running? Uh, that, that's a stupid choice. At least in this, this situation. I mean, he, he he's pretty much... Yeah, he has no chance right now. Uh, of course he goes head on. Flaps. Surprising he's not dead yet. Let's change that. plenty of ammunition left. We are not that high in energy, but still decent. Whatever he thinks he's doing. Yep. Unlike the BF109, this thing is maneuverable enough to Oh my god, what a shot! This thing can't tangle with Spitfire Mark 9s. With careful use of flaps, this thing is very well able to do that. Let's make sure no one steals that. Great. Swing it around. Garden her as well. And that's game. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly how you fly the RA2005. This is an incredible dogfighter. Yeah, four kills, easy peasy. Also, well done to the team. Um, let's see the results again, but I, I know for a fact that this team, uh, without the team supporting me that much, I wouldn't have gotten that result, I think. They flew rather well, I have to say. The Doe 335, yeah, this guy had three kills, not bad for a Doe 335. They were probably bombers, but still. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, alright, um. Okay, so only four people got any kills in this match. Okay, four of them were useless bombers, so, eh. But, yeah. We did have two more aircraft. Well, that, that probably kind of evened out the fact that we had a handicap in the form of these four guys. Yeah, sorry, but... but 
Uh, I'm just I'm just lost for words. I mean, Bombers, Jerry Two Eighty Eights. I'm not the only one who thinks that that, that they are ruining ruining this BR. But anyways, four kills. Um, one hell of a match. Um, so, yeah, a pretty good demonstration of the RE 2005's capabilities, I'd say. So, and that's it for the Rajani 2005. A great fighter in itself. It really is a dream to fly. However, would I recommend this aircraft? For a fighter aircraft in itself, yes. However, it sits at battle rating 5.7 and it, you will get so many t uh, matchups with uh, 288 guys. It, it really is, isn't fun flying this thing at the moment. Um, you will likely face, uh, even if you want to challenge, yeah, you can go up against 5 enemy aircraft and get your ass uh, shut down. But that's not really the fun of it. In a fair dogfight, 1 versus 1, this thing is incredibly strong. However, you will most likely get let down by your team, because four of the guys are bombers. And yeah, that's not really fun. Until something gets done about this. Um, it still is a very good fighter, but prepare to face a lot of uh, frustrating gameplay. Not because this thing is any bad, because it, it really isn't, it's, it's absolutely great. But um, the circumstances at which this thing is uh, fighting, they just aren't the best. Let's put it this way. I, will, I would still recommend this machine. It's incredibly fun when it is able to perform. And uh, it basically emphasizes what the Italian propeller tech tree is all about. Great firepower, great maneuverability, moderate speed. If you can live with these things, and I certainly can because I like a good dogfighter, then this thing is certainly for you. It's the pinnacle of the Series 5 in my opinion, and one of the best fighter aircraft in the game. So I, despite the situation it is, it, it, it is in, I would hi highly recommend this machine. So that's it for the Rejani 2005, I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you in the skies, land. I want to see you next time.